Well, me and Mike got called out here for a no water call. No idea what it is, but we're gonna figure it out. All right. First place I always like to start is the pressure tank. I believe the pressure tank's over here. All right. Always got to be worrisome of snakes. Look, they bought them a uh, water filter off of Amazon, it looks like. <clears throat> okay, first things first. Knock on the tank. Tank's good. It rings like a bell. Also, you can tip the tank. You just want it to move. If you can move it, you know the tank's good. Another test. Come up here. You can move take this. If you get air, and see, it should have more. That wasn't a lot. Michael, can you hand me the pressure gauge? Mm -hmm. Right here, here it is. Okay, so, <clears throat> you see right here, 38 PSI, that's what we should have in it. I'm gonna say this thing's probably got something like 12. Yeah, oh my God, hit that dead nuts on the head. Okay, yeah, we'll have to air this up, but, like my old filters up there, they just left it. Okay, but that's not the problem. The tank's low on air, but that's not the reason why. Okay, look, the pressure switch is open. So that seems like we've got pressure. Let's see here. But we don't, we don't have, ooh! Got my knee wet. But we don't have no pressure. So, if the switch is open like that, there's two possibilities. Either the switch is broken, or the nipple below the switch is clogged with sediment. So what we can do, <clears throat> is we can take these little pliers right here, and we're gonna open these up. And this little lever, this little bar back here on the back of the pressure switch, we're gonna pry it. Okay, look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna say that switch is broken. Yeah, that switch is broken. It's not moving. Okay, now, let's just try this. Now, remember, this has got 240 volts on it, so we don't want to touch any of that. So you're going to use the plastic cover, and we're just going to push the contacts. There you go. And it, yep, we heard it kick on. But that switch, that switch is broken. Okay. So we know indefinitely that we need to replace the, the pressure switch. So that's what we're going to do first. Now, while we're replacing the pressure switch, we have the system off. We're going to turn the system off here. Or you could go to the breaker panel, which I would always recommend going to the panel. Um, we're, we, you cannot have any water pressure on the system. Like right now, I've got 10 pounds of pressure. You can't go up here and check your air now. You only can check your air when your pressure gauge is on zero. So it's always best to turn your system off. And look at that, pressure went somewhere. Pressure went somewhere, okay. But regardless, <clears throat> we know the switch is bad, so we need to replace it. Now that I've got the wires taken out of the pressure switch, we wanna go ahead, open this. Okay, so we don't have any severe amount of pressure, right? So we've got the water basically out of the system. So we're just gonna use a three-quarter inch wrench. We're gonna go down here on the bottom. I believe that's a three-quarter inch wrench. It may be, no, that may be a nine-sixteenths. Uh, nine-sixteenths right there on the bottom. And we'll unspin the pressure switch. We wanna make sure the nipple is clean. Now, zero water pressure on the system. We can go ahead and add air to the top of our tank. If we move the tank and we hear water sloshing inside of it, the tank is bad, it must be replaced. If you hear water slosh in your tank, ain't no need adding air to it because you're just putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound, you need to go ahead and replace it. Now, you need to get you a little baby compressor like this, anything that'll pump up air. We're just gonna take our, our chuck, come up here, and we're gonna add air to it. Just like that. It's always good to have a two to four pound differentiation below whatever the on number is on your switch. So if you have a 3050 switch, 30 PSI is where it cuts on, you need 28 PSI in your tank. Since this is gonna be a 4060 switch, 40 PSI is when it cuts on, 
we need to be below that number. That's why we have 38. You just need to be below whatever the on number is by a couple PSI. All right, Mike, we need to go ahead and plug that back in. We're going to have to uh, pump it up because we've only got 28 PSI in the tank right now. We need to get it to 38. Just reach down here, <clears throat> twist it. You don't have to use channel locks. You can use a regular boxed in wrench. So I'm spinning. Water comes out is a good sign. Underneath the pressure switch you see inside of here, you can see the hole, that's a good thing. Now yours, if you have a gray galvanized nipple here, you may want to take your screwdriver, or in any case, just take your screwdriver and drop it in there. You wanna make sure you don't have any obstruction. I had a little bit of buildup, you can see the the red water coming out of that, but it's not bad. Not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and open this, let any trash come out. Okay, now it's time to put the new pressure switch on. Okay, it's only been about three minutes. I've got the switch all threaded on. I still have to wire it, but I went ahead and I stopped adding air to the tank. Let's check the pressure. 36.5, that's perfect. We're gonna go ahead and leave it there. Mike, you can go ahead and turn the air compressor off. Okay. Now, when it comes to wiring a switch, it, it's a whole lot less complicated than what you would think. Um, you basically need to split the hot side and the load side. So an easy way to understand this is you've got black wires and you've got white wires. If you just keep the two black wires on one side and the two white wires on the other side, you didn't, you'll never get it wrong. It doesn't matter which way you do it. As long as you keep the blacks on one side and the whites on the other side, you're good to go. Just use the center as your divide. There's only one wrong way to wire up a switch, and that would be taking both of these, which is your feed wires, and putting them on the same side. When you do that, you create a direct short. That's the only wrong way to wire a switch. You just basically want to separate those hot legs onto opposite sides of the switch. So since the white would be here and the black would be here, you would then put the black from the pump here and the white from the pump here. No problem. So just for anybody who needs to understand, this is how you wire up a switch. The white's on one side and the black's on the other. You can reverse them. Blacks can be over here, whites can be over here. You keep your colors together and you'll never get it wrong. Now, we've got a new switch. We've got our tank aired up to the proper pressure. What we need to do is now we need to focus on, is the pump bad? So how do you check the pump if it's bad? You cannot use an electric meter. Although this is an electric meter, you can test voltage. You need a clamp style amperage meter. That's what this is. It'll measure two amps, 20 amps, and 100 amps. So because we were seeing 20 amps, let's go ahead and kick it over here to 100. This is gonna measure the current draw that is inside this wire. And we're only gonna clamp it around one individual wire. You can't clamp it around the whole leg. You gotta clamp it around one little leg right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna kick the power on. Sometimes you'll have to have somebody kick the breaker on while you're staring at the meter. Because a lot of times, you're not gonna get a very long amount of time to see if the pump is bad. So you need to be staring at it as soon as the pump is energized, let's listen and watch. 6.2. Now every time a pump starts, it pulls 20 amps during its startup. That's its most time when it's under the most amount of stress, when it goes from 0 to 100%. And then run amps is what you see here, 6.2. That's typical. What it was probably doing, the switch was probably fried, and it wasn't giving it a really good connection, so it, it kept, like, flickering the pump on and off, like, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off, and it made it stick in that start phase. But what we'll do now that we've replaced the switch and we've aired up the tank properly, we're going to go ahead run some water outside and allow the system to fluctuate up and down a few different times to where we know that the pump isn't gonna overheat and start pulling higher amperage. So see, we've got proper PSI on the gauge. 
and we don't know if the toilets in the house are empty, but we need to make sure that the check valve and the pump's not bad. So we're going to let the system operate a few different times, and then we'll come back to make sure the system pumps up to 60, and it holds at 60, because we don't want it to leak down. Right now, we've already seen it leak down 5 PSI, but that could be just due to toilets in the house filling because they haven't had water for two days. Now, just for full transparency, anyone can diagnose a well pump system. All they need is this tool right here. Now, I'm not gonna have a link to this in my video description. You can find this on Amazon. It's a clamp style amp meter. I bought this one on Amazon for $18. They also have $80 ones, $60 ones. You can even go to Harbor Freight. They sell a small one, a little bit smaller than this, for 16 bucks because that's all you need you clamp it on one wire and that'll tell you if your well pump is bad or not that'll prevent you from having to pull your well pump out thinking it's your well pump all you need to do is know the horsepower rating of your pump and then from there you can determine if your pump's bad now a half horsepower pump like we have here pulls six to seven amps a three-quarter horsepower pump pulls seven to eight and a half amps a one horsepower pump can pull eight and a half to 10 amps. Anything higher than that, you start getting around the 12, the 13, the 14 amp range. You've, you've got a pump that's basically got a bearing that's going that's starting to go bad in the motor. And eventually if that runs long enough, it'll overheat the motor and then it'll cut itself off on a thermal overload. Now, if you have a pump that's running regardless of horsepower, and say it pulls 3 amps, 2.8, 3.3, and you're not getting any water, but you have amperage, what that means is the splines on the inside of the pump, the bottom of the pump is the motor, the top section of the pump is the pump itself. With It's got you know a dozen or so impellers in there. In the center is a drive shaft that spins all the impellers. Sometimes the spline shaft will go out, and it'll still be spinning, but it won't be spinning the impellers. Well, if it's not spinning the impellers, but the motor's still spinning, that's not under any load. So it's not going to show you a lot of amperage because it's not under load. So those are just a few different variations that, that you, as a, as a person who's trying to DIY this, test it on their own to understand. Amp draw tells you everything. Sometimes no amperage is also an indicator of a broken wire down the well. Now, when you have a broken wire down the well, that's when you use the voltmeter side of things. You can take one wire nut loose out at the well, separate the two wires, and then test the, the feed coming out there to ground to make sure you get 120, and then test the feed that goes down the well and comes back. Like You would think that you wouldn't get any voltage on that because it's not connected to the feed wire, but it's actually going to give you return voltage. So you would test then that wire to ground. You should get 120 on both wires when they're separated. Now, if, if you, know, you get 120 on both of them when they're separated, hook them back together, take the, take the other wires apart. Like say the first time you tested the black wires, take the other side, take the white wires apart, separate them. Make sure the black wires are connected. Do the same thing. Test one white leg to ground, you should get 120. And then test the other white leg to ground, you should get 120. Now, if you have no amperage and you go to test it and you get one of them that's feeding back, say, 50 volts, that means whatever leg that you just tested is broken down in the well. And that's how I determine whether or not I've got like a broken leg down in the well trying to figure out if the wire's bad. Typically, one of the wires is always going to be good. It'll feed me 120 volts. But one of them is going to be bad. It'll feed me like 50 or 80 or 30 or zero. Sometimes when it's completely broken down there, it just goes to zero. So that's a way to tell. I don't know if you can picture it in your head. But if you follow that, that's a way to test it. Just spitting out knowledge and information from 20 years of doing this. Giving it to you over a video. So we have been running water for the better part of 15 minutes. I've let the, the system cycle about six or seven times. Mike has went ahead and turned off the hydrant that he was running outside. You can see I got 6.2 amps and my pressure gauge over there slowly starting to climb. And my amp draw on my pump is still 6.2. So the well pump is running beautifully. It's about to click off.
Perfect. All right. Just as simple as that. This one just needed a new switch, and it needed the bladder tank to be recharged. That's a good one. We're all done inside. Went ahead and covered the well back up. Covered the lip of the rock back with their little rocks. Come over here. Open this up. Looks great. Looks absolutely wonderful. I know they're going to be excited. Cool. Well, just a quick little diagnosis of a well pump troubleshooting. Should tell you everything you need to know. If you need any more detailed videos, check out my playlist section of this channel. There are dozens and dozens of videos, water well pump related.